license in my early teens when I was 13. I got pleurisy from smoking, and I just was back in hospital. And water on, great, I love it, fabulous. <laughs> um, when it came to uh, the Beatles, you see, I was in a band called Rory Storm and the other games before the Beatles would even, uh, before they even had a drum. And Rory Storm was the biggest band in Liverpool at that time. But occasionally I would sit in with them. By that time we'd started playing Hamburg, Germany. A lot of the British, British fans were there. And uh, occasionally I'd always go to see the Beatles. I was a fan of the Beatles. And their drummer, Pete Best, so he was decent. But, uh, we sort of got along, me and the other Beatles, much better. So eventually they asked me to join, and I said yes. And uh, when it came to writing songs, and you have a Ben in the car, you know, uh, it was a problem for me because I wasn't much of a songwriter. Every time I wrote a song and brought it in, they said, Great, bring you up another Jerry Lee Lewis. So there you are. Uh, eventually, though, like George had said, you know, the Beatles became a bit of a drag by the late 60s. And actually, I was the first of the Beatles as well to quit the Beatles because I thought I was playing like shite. And I thought, you know, they were all getting along great. In fact, I called up John. I rang him up. I said, John, you know, you three are getting along great. You know, I'm playing like shite. I'm out of it. He said, I thought it was you three. And I called up Paul. I said, same thing. I'm playing like shite. You three seem to get. He said, I thought it was you three. <laughs> I don't remember you calling me, you know. <laughs> oh, it, we all had answer phones in those days, we did. So, uh, anyway, I borrowed my friend Peter Sellers' yacht and went out with my family on a little cruise. And when it came time for lunch, the captain, I told him I got fish and chips, like a good, respectable Liverpool lad. And uh, he put the plate in front of me, and I had this glory stuff on that. I said, what the, what's that from? You know, he said, that's squid. And proceeded to tell me that squid and octopus... They go to the bottom of the sea and they find shiny objects and build a garden. And I felt like being at the bottom of the sea anyway at that point. Uh, and that's when I started writing this song, which the others, I brought back to them, they helped me finish. You know. I'd like to be on the sea, in an octopus's garden, in a ship. He'd let us see knows where we be. That hides beneath the wave. I'd ask my friend to come and see that octopus is gone to me. I'd like to be sing along, why don't you? On the sea, in an octopus is gone to me. One more time, in an octopus is gone to me. One more time. So um, at this point, after playing a bunch more songs in the show, I'd say, you know, when we did the whole Beatles thing, the press was on, that's 24-7. You know, you'd think you'd know everything there is to know about the Beatles already, right? Yeah. Well, tonight's your chance to set that record straight. So if you'd like to ask a question, just raise your hand, say the name of the Beatle you'd like to ask, and ask your question. And so, uh, Any all right. Um, over here. Um, Ringo, do you think that Pete Best is has animosity? Pete who? I don't know. Pete <laughs> who? Oh, uh, yes. Well, I don't think so. Though. You know, not towards me. I didn't do it. You know, it was John. I'll tell you. All right, Ringo. That's enough of that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, Pete just wasn't one of us. You know, I mean, um, we just had to let him go because he, you know, he just sort of wouldn't change his hair for long. You know, I mean, I've seen his hair. <laughs> Yeah, that pompadour, yeah. You know. But anyway, um, you know, the Ringo, when they sat in with us, you know, just clicked, you know, just sort of worked. And uh, it was George, mostly, who was, who was lobbying for him. So, um, and it was you, Paul? No, it wasn't, I swear. You know, it was, uh, it was definitely George. All right, enough about that. Next question. Oh and I'm asking one, so McCartney, do an impression. Oh, me? Oh, wait, wait, there's one there, John. Off the hook. 
was John? Was Hey Jude for your son? Um, you know, Hey Jude was all written by Paul, but yes, it was yeah. actually. Um, I believe it was one written for Julian, yeah, on this song. Uh, I was going to be divorced with Cynthia, my first wife, you know, and 68, sort of um, you know, going with Yoko. Um, and Paul, um, I think he'd be able to tell you better. Thing was, um, yeah, I felt really bad for Sin, you know, because we were friends, we were mates, you know, from when we were younger, you know, all came up together. And so, uh, you know, I used to drive out to John's house just to see how she and, you know, little Julian were doing. And on the way out one day, I just started thinking, you know, hey, Jules, you know, don't take it so bad, you know. Um, and then I just sort of wrote it, you know, from that, you know, I don't know if this is in tune or anything. Uh, yeah, great. Sort of, whoa, what's that? Hey, Jude, don't make a bad song. Yo, make it better. You know, and I just thought from there, you know, if I make it jewels, that's probably not a good idea. Like, too personal, we don't want people to know quite what it's about. Keep a bit of mystery then. I changed it to Jude, and one unfortunate story was we'd opened a shop in the mid 60s. Uh, where we sold clothing and things um, on Baker Street. And uh, it didn't really last, you see. We ended up giving everything all away. Uh, it lasted only a short time. So once we cleared out the store, the Hey Jude single was about to come out on the market. And I had the idea, since we whitewashed the windows of this store, since there was nothing in it anymore, I thought I'd go down in the middle of the night and scratch out, you know, clear out Hey Jude you know, in the window, Baker Street, like right in the heart of London, you know, Sherlock Holmes and all that. Anyways, um, the problem was nobody knew what Hey Jude was yet. And this was at, at times only like 20 some odd years after the Holocaust. So unfortunately, Jude was a word associated with the Holocaust for, you know, Jews and things. Or uh, somebody threw a brick through the window. You know, so that was unfortunate. But uh, anyway, that's a bit, a bit of trivia. Next question. Or I'll have to do an impression. Um, I have a question for John. Yeah, shut up, Paul. It's for me now. <laughs> what inspired you to write the song Imagine? Uh, it was sort of the statement I wanted to make to the world. You know, the vision of the world was, you know, basically <clears throat> what I said in the song. You know. Imagine there's no heaven It's easy if you try No hell will be lost Above us on the sky Piano one day, and a lot of people think the song's about Patty, your first wife. 
well actually 